It was nearly eight years ago when residents in the Terra Nativa subdivision in the Boise foothills were forced to move out and abandon their homes after they learned the land beneath them was shifting. Hector Mendoza revisits the slow moving but devastating landslide that caused severe damage to several homes in 2016. We were all in heaven up there. We had this beautiful view and the houses that we wanted. But that view was short lived. We didn't get to live there for two years. A landslide crumbled two homes and significantly damaged four other homes built in the Terra Nativa subdivision in the Boise foothills in the spring of 2016. Our second house on the right, they were right on the, what's called the margin of the slide or the border of the slide and that slide literally ripped their house in half. Eric Grossman, an attorney and homeowner who lost his home, says he initially had no idea what was going on until a neighbor called him. And he said, you would not believe what is going on. Our house is getting, I mean, we've got floor planks coming up, the walls are cracking. It feels like the house is falling apart. Rossman says he hoped his home could be saved or rebuilt. I mean, that was the ideal hope. But once he learned how much the land was moving underneath the homes. We knew we were going to lose it at some point. Definitely not something we see every day. City employees like building official Jason Blaze were just as surprised as the homeowners. We went to investigate and sure enough the landslide was basically going right through one of the homes. And that's when we had to start investigating further with Public Works for sure. We were convinced through engineering experts that that should never have happened. We should never have been on that. That, that should have never been developed. When KTVB interviewed city spokesperson Mike Journey in 2016, he said at no point in the permitting process were concerns raised over possible landslides. Our experts don't have any data, don't have any indication uh, that uh, the conclusion that their expert came to um, is, is imminent. We filed lawsuits. We sued uh, the developer, we sued this, the developer's engineers, we sued the city, we sued the city's engineers. Aerial photos were collected as evidence for the lawsuit that showed there was an existing landslide where the homes were developed. Nobody even identified the landslide. They didn't even look at aerial photographs. So we, we had real issues with the way that, that development was approved and submitted and ultimately uh, how, how uh, it was developed. City code says you can't build on landslide areas, but in that same code, there's an exception allowing construction if the project engineer can prove with reports and proper analysis that these site limitations can be overcome to minimize hazards to life and property and any adverse effect of buildings there. There's a lot of factors that go into developing up there. In this case, James Party, a city engineer, says the city determined there was enough analysis to allow construction on the hillside. This is private property. That burden falls on the developer who typically hires uh, professional engineers and professional ge geologists and geotechs to go up there, do site evaluations, and then the burden lies on them to demonstrate that the site is safe for building. Once the city receives those reports, a third party firm reviews them to double check the project engineer's work. And if the firm says it's good, the city gives the green light for the project. Really the city's role in this is to kind of honor the process and to make sure that, you know, we're making period people aware of potential hazards and making sure that uh, due diligence is kind of done through through the processes that are established. Litigation in this case lasted about two years. It was a terrible couple of years. And as an attorney, Rossman was able to represent himself. I didn't understand that there is an exclusion in your homeowner's insurance policy, in your property insurance policy for ground movement. So there was no insurance to cover any of this. So the only financial recovery we were going to get was through bringing, bringing the, the lawsuits and the claims. And ultimately those were uh, resolved to everyone's satisfaction. In the settlement, the city of Boise paid homeowners a total of $257,000 money the homeowners split. And all parties agreed to dismiss the case. Ultimately, most of the homes were demolished and the properties auctioned off. So there's one remaining home out there in our understanding. It's still under litigation. As you can see, not much is left of the neighborhood on North Alto via court, but an engineer I spoke with says not all hope is lost for homeowners looking to build on the Boise foothills. One of the things, the benefits of, a, of that slide is there's been a lot of studies on that slide and, and stability in the foothills in general. It's kind of lit a fire under all of us to really make sure we're, we're doing a better job of getting a good understanding of what's happening and, and, and really being able to provide that information to developers 
um, and feel confident with, with the recommendations that we give. The city says it'll take more rigorous requirements to convince the city that area of land can take more development. It would be very challenging. It's going to take some significant engineering investigation for anything to be considered. Rossman hopes this never happens to any future homeowners. It impacts your work, it impacts your family, it impacts your relationship. And uh, we all went through all of that, all those emotions in that couple of years. Of course, there's a lot of geology that goes into the explanation of what caused the landslide in the first place. As for that piece of property that has shown a history of shifting, the city hasn't had anyone interested in building on North Alta Via Court.